Yeah. All <clears throat> last week, we jumped into the Word of God and just let the Lord lead us in it, but we've been talking about how patience mm -hmm. makes perfect. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say practice makes yeah, perfect, yeah, and maybe yeah. in some environments that's true, but according to the Word, it's patience yeah. that makes us perfect. And, and we did this discipline last week. Just, take, just took a moment of time. We'll do it again today. Begin to use this God-given gift of imagination. Mm -hmm. And imagine yourself perfect. Oh, well, nobody's perfect. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Just before you get mad at me. Yeah. Imagine yourself perfect. Not, not flawless, good. but but perfect the way the Bible defines perfect. Uh, Paul said by the Spirit of God in Ephesians, he said that, that you and I would should no longer be children tossed right. to and fro, right. carried about with every wind of doctrine, but that we should be growing up into a perfect man That's good. to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Mm -hmm. And that paints such a picture in me. Here, Jesus is the head of this body. We have a full grown man's <laughs> head. <laughs> but what happens when the rest of, the, rest of the body yeah. refuses to grow up? That's yeah. just a funny looking sight. You got a full grown head on a baby's body. That's not right. That, that so, calls for a cartoon. <laughs> oh, well, we'll work on that later. <laughs> but uh, that, that's the idea of perfection, yeah. growing, developing, maturing. Right. And I think part of the reason that we hear that and it doesn't really do anything for us right away is because for so many people that is such a foreign thought. But the Spirit of God is in you for the express purpose, the, the, the one assignment that the Spirit of God has in you is to reveal Jesus mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. Jesus yeah. said, I'm not leaving you orphans. I'm sending you a helper and he is coming. He's not going to speak on his own authority. He'll say what he hears me say. Right. right. He'll show you things to come. He's going to reveal Jesus to yeah. us. And if he's revealing Jesus, he's revealing perfection. Yes. And reveal Jesus to us and in us. Sure. <clears throat> and through us to others as well. Absolutely. Being conformed to that image of Jesus. Which is perfection. Perfection. Full grown, wow. fully developed. Wow. And so we're taking that time to develop that on the inside. And I think about uh, you as a pastor and some of the pastors that you minister to. I mean, what would it be like for some of the pastors that you know? You walk into this church building or whatever, whatever they're in. And you say, wow, pastor, this is a beautiful place. You know how much you owe on it. Yeah. What would it be like as a pastor to say nothing? nothing. <laughs> Complete. Yeah. Perfect. perfect. Lacking. Lacking nothing. nothing. Yeah. That means yeah. get an image of what you would look like lacking no healing, yeah. lacking no peace, yeah. lacking no provision, lacking no joy. We have got to get a picture of that on the inside because that is the condition that the body of Christ is called to live in. Oh, yeah, that high place. And if we, if we were to find a place in the Word that said, you can look like that and here's how, yeah. you, do you make the decision right away, okay, if I see that, I'll believe it. Mm -hmm. Well, James chapter 1, and this is where we spent all last week, James chapter 1, verse 2, James writing, and he says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Right just fell right into the middle of it. Various meaning variegated. Uh, uh, l listening to Pastor Rick Renner talk about some of these same things, he said it means all shapes and colors. Yes. I was so fascinated when he said colors because years ago when I was studying this, and he said that's what that word meant, just various shapes, various colors, mm -hmm. various sizes. I studied, when I was studying this, I found that word variegated. And I think one of the... Yeah, I was going to say, did you make that up? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to know what I make up. It's not worth anything. But I found that word, and it's actually in some of the other translations, and studying what that word variegated meant, mm -hmm. um, it variegated. referenced artwork that was, that appeared to be just random splashes yeah. of color. I know you've studied artists and, yeah. and designers yeah. who, you look at it and think, well, my three-year-old Justice could do that, right? But there was, you know, it just looked like it was random. Sure. And, and that's that word variegated. You, there's no pattern to it. There's no, there's no looking at it and saying, oh, well, this is, this is where it came from. I know how to handle this. Mm. 
mm-hmm. what Pastor Rick was saying and, and what he was saying James was endeavoring to communicate was like, look, you know, if it was just, if it all just made sense, you'd know what to do about it yeah. and joy would be easy. But he said, these aren't these kinds of trials. These so he said that's the word... Uh, various, what? I think other translations say divers. Divers, okay. Yeah. So that's the variegated... Yeah, variegated. Word. Okay. And the word I would use yeah. is random. Random. Just random. Where <clears throat> on earth did this come from? How on earth did yeah. this get here? Yeah. Now the interesting yeah. thing about that is he said, count it joy. Mm-hmm. Which right away, you know, if joy was natural, he wouldn't have had to tell you to count it joy. Yeah. So how do we access this unnatural response of joy to various trials? Well, joy is the result of knowing something. Joy is like confidence. Joy is the same as boldness. Sure. It comes as the result of knowing something. And the challenging thing about that is here you are in the middle of situations and trials and circumstances that are characterized by what you don't know. I don't know how it got here. Mm -hmm. I don't know what let this in, and I really don't know what to do about it. So where's your joy gonna come from? Well, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, verse three, knowing. Knowing. Here's what you know. That's good, knowing. Knowing that Mm -hmm. the testing of your faith produces patience. Verse four, let patience have its perfect work Now here's patience, perfect work, that you may be perfect, Mm -hmm. that you would be complete, that you would be lacking nothing. So we've got this image now on the inside of us, perfect, complete, lacking nothing. Okay, that's great, that's wonderful. How do I get there? Patience. Mm -hmm. I know it's not what you wanted to hear, but it's what the (laughs) Word of God said. How do we get there? Patience. And really what we've been endeavoring to do through this whole last week of broadcast, moving into this one, is just some good old fashioned mind renewal about sure. what patience means. Because good, good. patience, for so many people, they just get that image of the doctor's office and I've been here for 45 minutes and when's it my turn and I'm <laughs> looking at this clock, I got places to go, I got things to do and, and that's patience. Patience has less to do with waiting and more the, to do with the condition in which you wait. And there is a yeah, waiting good. element of patience. Ask Abraham, right? Uh, I mean, here's a man that got a word from God and the next day, did anything change? No. The next day, did anything change? No. The next year, the next 10 years, the next 20 years, it's over 20 years later, but he inherited that promise. Go to Hebrews chapter six and we'll find out how he inherited that promise. We have our, our thinking in reference to Everybody from Abraham to Kenneth and Gloria Copeland Mm -hmm. is to say, wow, Mm -hmm. these are great people of faith. And of course, generations, every generation between Abraham and here. And you think about anybody that's been anywhere or done anything in the kingdom of God or or they've been blessed and you can look at their life and there's, there's physical evidence of the blessing of God at work and you would think, wow, what faith? Well, let's find out what it was. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 11, we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance, there's that hope, that knowing something, Mm -hmm. the full assurance of hope till the end, not halfway through then quit, but to the end, that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and and patience. patience inherit the promise. For when God made a promise to Abraham because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself saying, surely blessing I will bless you and multiplying I'll multiply you. And so after he had patiently endured, Mm. I like that this translation here, New King James, you see it's patiently endured. This word that's so often translated patience is also translated endurance and that's probably a better word. It's endurance. Mm -hmm. It's not just waiting, it's enduring. It's the refusal to quit. Good. So here you've got faith, and of course, Abraham, the father of our faith. Of course, he's a man of faith, but we need to recognize that he was equally a man of patience. Mm -hmm. This wasn't just something that got added to him. This wasn't just, oh, you're a patient man. You've got, uh, you were born with that quality. You know, it's not that. This is a supernatural work of God 
in the heart and life of somebody who will take him at his word that when trials come and time passes mm -hmm. and more time mm -hmm. and more time mm -hmm. and pressure comes to talk you out of what God said belongs to you, it's this supernatural <laughs> life of God in you that says, I will not quit. Excellent. That's patience. That's patience. Through yep. faith and patience, they inherit the promises. When people look at Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, and you've been looking at them for <laughs> 35, <laughs> yeah, 36 37 years. Yeah, years, yes. And uh, you know, you've heard people all over the world say, oh, just their faith is so inspiring. Yeah. It's so yeah. inspiring to watch people of faith. And I couldn't agree anymore. I mean, I absolutely. But uh, back in December of 2012, I shared this story last week. Sarah and I uh, having a meal with Mimi and Papa, and mm -hmm. um, we were getting in the car. We were out in Colorado, and we were getting in the car, and I, I had kind of worked up the nerve, I think, to ask Mimi something, and I said, Mimi, how do we get, how does Sarah and I get from where we are right now mm -hmm. to where we see that God has called us to be? Yeah. You know, I've shared some of the vision with you and mom about what the Lord's put inside right. of us and right. what we see our future holds. And man, it's getting bigger every day. And I just asked her, I said, how do we get from where we are to where <coughs> we see ourselves needing to be? Yeah. And nearly before I could finish asking the question, you know what she said? Hmm. Keep walking. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just like that too. It wasn't like, Jeremy, listen to me. Let yeah. me tell you. Yeah. Let yeah, me yeah, tell yeah. you the secret to my success. You gotta keep. No, it was just keep yeah. walking. Keep walking. Yeah. And I, I said to her, I should have known <laughs> that you were. That's what we call around here a gloryism. Yeah. Keep, uh, keep walking. Keep walking. <laughs> and you, at, at first you think, really, that's it? That's all you got for me? But I have Perfect. thought that's about good. that answer mm -hmm. probably every day since then. Mm -hmm. And the truth in it and the revelation in it. And it has brought me to this place now where I look at Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. And not only do I see people of faith, yeah. I see people of great patience. Yes to stay with this thing decade after, after decade, decade, <laughs> after decade. <laughs> yeah. and living, this is where we left off last week, living unresponsive to the pressure. Yeah. And it was that statement, yeah. Dad, that I think really, I don't know what's the right word, um, that the Lord led me through that statement to want to sit down with you because when I look at you in your life, one thing that has always characterized you to me is just, how do you even say this? Just a real evenness mm -hmm. to you. There, there's not, just maybe a handful of times in my life have I ever seen <laughs> that emotional bump. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And not, not to say that you're a, a, a stoic man. No, you're one of yeah. the most fun-loving guys I've ever known in my life. But, but you, you have developed in the art of living unresponsive to pressure. And I've <laughs> even heard you share those times where you're driving off this property and you swore up and down <laughs> and was never the coming last back day. again. <laughs> but you know what? Yeah. I wonder how many times Abraham just wanted to throw in the towel. Yeah. And the, the cool yeah. thing is you find in Romans 4 that he was fully persuaded. Then you find in Hebrews 11 that Sarah was fully persuaded. Yeah. And it was there working together. You, you know he had those days where he was like, is this thing ever going to come? Sure. But Sarah was there. Nope. Remember, we got a word from God. Yeah. Anyway, all that to yeah. say, I, I yeah. feel like I've witnessed in you a man that has lived unresponsive to the pressure, specifically the pressure to quit. And I just sense in my heart that there's a real connection there to a revelation of what patience Praise God. really is. Praise God. I mean, what would you say has, has been the fuel to your decision, I'm not backing off this thing? Yeah. Um, refuse to quit. Wow. Uh, you know, <clears throat> I think watching your grandparents, mm -hmm. Kenneth and Gloria, I've watched them through the years and I've seen him stand and believe and stand and believe and reach out in faith for things that seemed impossible. Yeah. And over periods of time, they come. And I just, I just, with the word, have such a sense that this thing is going to turn out right. This mm -hmm. is going to be right. We're just going to keep work. We're going to keep walking. Yeah. We're going to keep going. And I've just, 
I don't know, there's just been something about me over the years, listening to the Word, getting that down on the inside of me, that when those times of temptation come, there's, there's a resilience. I am not going to quit. I'm not going to give up. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep moving. We are going to see this thing fulfilled. Yeah. It's like that, that bulldog faith on the inside that just will not let go of that bone. Mm -hmm. And I think over the years with the development of the Word and through some experiences that I've sure. been through here, well, where <laughs> I think James chapter one is probably a pretty good. It, it can take it. It's it's a good description of every life at one point or another. Yeah. But you you have fallen into the middle of some stuff. Yeah. Really? <laughs> at KCM and EMIC and, and, sure, and other places as well. Places, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, but but it's locating that thing that would cause nine out of ten people to throw it in. Yeah and say, I yeah. refuse to quit. We've yeah. been looking at this verse in Hebrews 10, and I want to read it as we begin to wrap up this sure. broadcast today. Uh, in verse 32, he said, Recall the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured. Yeah. So there's endurance. Yeah. There's patience. You endured a great struggle with sufferings, partly while you were made a spectacle both by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. For you had compassion on me and my chains, and joyfully, okay, so yeah. here's the joy connection yeah. again. Yeah. This has really gotten big to me, this joy-patience connection, because the natural response to patience is, I ain't got, I ain't got time to wait. Yeah. But the supernatural response is, it is my joy to wait in the presence of God yes. and not to say anything until I hear him say it, do anything until I see him do it. You joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and enduring possession for yourselves. Therefore, yeah. or in light of this, in light of what you've been through, yeah. in light of the experience that you have, yeah. don't cast away your confidence. Don't throw away your faith. It has great reward. For you have need of patience. King James says patience. <laughs> New King James says endurance. Yeah. Yeah. And if the Bible tells you yeah. you need patience, what do you need? Patience. patience. It's not just some character quality you, you have or you don't have. And right. Some are born with it and some are, right. well, I'm just not a very patient person. I don't like to let the grass grow under my feet. Well, yeah. if you're not a patient person, you're also a person that has not received from God because you only have as much faith as you do patience. Yeah. You've got need of endurance so that after you've done the will of God, you may receive the promise for yet a little while and he who is coming will come and will not tarry, but the just shall live by faith. Mm. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him, but we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe, believe. to the saving of the yes. soul. Yes. And that's what I feel like I've been privileged to witness in you and mom and Mimi and Papa and so many others. Sure. And you've sure. raised us up to be people that refuse to draw back. Yeah. And that's what dad and I are going to encourage you with all week long this week. You are not somebody who draws back. You're not anointed to quit. Just quit quitting right now. <laughs> no more quitting. Quit quitting. You don't draw back. Huh. You press on in faith. And it's the power of the patience of God yeah. in you, working through you, that will carry you through. Excellent. Amen. We have been talking for over a week now about the power of patience. Yeah. Um, this was really very exciting to me. Uh, I, and I have to be honest with you. I got to tell you where this came from. Several weeks ago, well, a long time ago now, and especially by the time these broadcasts yeah. are viewed, uh, I'll tell you, it was right at the beginning of this year. Um, I just began to sense a real need in me for patience. Hmm. And I'll just be real honest with you where that came from. I have a two-year-old uh, yeah. and uh, who's, <laughs> who, well, he's now three by the time these broadcasts air. And yeah. I just, I wasn't, I'm going to be real honest. I wasn't pleased by how quickly I seemed to run out of patience with him. Yeah. No, 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 don't misunderstand me. I wasn't being a, a mean or bad dad to him. But, but it was just like I just found myself sort of hovering around that line of frustration. I thought, I don't want to be this way. There, there is a, I, I, the Lord just, it was, it was him. He opened my eyes to see a real need for patience. I want to be 
a patient dad. I want to be yeah. a patient husband yeah. and, and even more than I have been. And I want to grow in that. And I thought, I, I'm going to study this. That's and good. anytime the Lord says, I want you to know more about this. Anytime he says that to me, one of the first things I do, and I'll be painfully obvious <laughs> or honest with you, I go to www.flcbranson.org. That's Keith Moore's Keith website. <laughs> and I, found, I find out what Brother Keith has already preached sure. on it. And sure. I do that with, with many different teachers. Yeah. And I, I just, why should I leave school? Right. You know, these guys, you guys, you and Papa and Brother Keith and so many others have been such wonderful teachers in our lives. And I, I went looking to see what he had said on patience. And I found it, and it was from a series he had started like two weeks before that. Oh, really? It was, oh, wow. it was like, wow. I'm coming into this thing. Yeah. And yeah. I, 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 that just really blessed me to find out the, the Lord was dealing with me on this for more than one reason. And the more I got into it, the more I yeah. began to see this isn't just about me being a patient dad, although that is a huge part of it because what we've seen so far is that it requires faith and, and patience, patience sure. to inherit the promises. Yeah. Now here are Sarah and I in our own ministry and vision is exploding on the inside of us almost on a daily basis and it's getting bigger and bigger <laughs> every day. Matter of fact, I found this uh, scripture uh, I found it like it was missing. It was, <laughs> it was in the book of Romans. It was there all along, yes. chapter 8, yeah. verse 22. And in the message translation, it says this, All around us we observe a pregnant creation. Oh my. The difficult times of pain throughout the world are simply birth pangs, but it's not only around us, it's within us. The Spirit of God is arousing us within. We're also feeling the birth pangs. And he said these bodies of ours are yearning for full deliverance. That is why waiting... Patience yeah, yeah. does not diminish us. And I think that's so good for Maybe us to establish diminish. in this understanding of patience. You're not being diminished by waiting. You're not, if you think you're losing something, you're losing yeah. time, you're losing, yeah. you know, you're not <clears throat> losing anything. We're not being diminished uh, by waiting. This is why waiting does not diminish us any more than waiting diminishes a pregnant mother. We are enlarged in the waiting. <laughs> yeah. And I shared uh, last week on this broadcast, I know That's something great. about this right now. Sarah sure. is just a few weeks away from delivering uh, baby number two for yeah. us. Our little yeah. girl is on her way. And I read this to Sarah just a few days ago. And she that's said, hey, great. I know what that's about, <laughs> getting, getting larger. And she's feeling that. Yeah. And uh, she's beautiful, just a beautiful pregnant mother. But it doesn't diminish us any more than waiting diminishes a pregnant mother. Right. We are okay. enlarged in the waiting. We, of course, don't see what is enlarging us, but the longer we wait, the larger we become, and the more joyful that's really good. our expectancy. I think that's a major key right there because time can either be your mm -hmm. friend or an enemy. Yeah. And the longer sometimes people wait and they don't see that mm -hmm. thing happening, um, and that's what I've had to deal with over the years is the longer something would go on, whether it be our house, mm -hmm. moving into a house or whatever it might be, um, you have a choice to make. Yeah. And it's either time is my friend because the longer I'm waiting on this, the more I'm going to develop my faith. And the more I'm growing. I'm, I'm growing on the large, inside. Yeah. Or it's, it's going to cause me to become discouraged mm -hmm. and quit. Yeah. In that series that Brother Keith was preaching, he said time tries trust. Hmm. Time tests trust. And that's why we've been spending so much time in James chapter 1. The testing of your faith yeah, that's good. produces Excellent. patience. Genuine faith is Excellent. faith that has been tested. Yeah. And what we've established in these broadcasts so far is that really faith isn't the hard part. I think some people, they, somewhere along the line, yeah. you started operating under a misunderstanding of what faith really is or isn't, and they think, well, I, I got this much faith, but not that, or right. my faith isn't there yet, or my faith is here and not there. But if you really bring it back down to what faith is, how it comes, how it operates, it's as simple as you having the ability mm -hmm. to hear the words coming out of my mouth mm -hmm. and repeating them back to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's as it's simple as me being able to hear you 
and just word for word saying what I heard you say. Yeah. That's how faith comes, by hearing. That's how faith operates, by saying what you heard. Yeah. That's how Jesus That's operated. So really, it's not that hard. And the only reason somebody would say, well, my faith isn't there, is because God didn't say that. You know what I mean? Like, uh, well, I can't believe for something that big. Well, the only reason you wouldn't be able to believe for it is because God never said anything about it to mm -hmm. you. Not yet anyway. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. having faith at any given level is just operating within the boundaries of His will for your life. Yeah, yeah. So faith isn't the hard part. Faith is believing. The challenging part to your flesh is the patience because faith is believing but patience is continuing to believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Patience is the refusal to quit believing. What did the psalmist say? I would have fainted. I would have lost yeah. heart. Yeah. What does that mean? I would have quit. I would have thrown in the <coughs> towel. I would have given up a long time ago if I had not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the yes. land of the living. Yes. That believing is what sustained him. But the very next verse, you know what it says? Wait on the Lord. Yeah, good. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, <laughs> on the Lord. I love the connection there. Yeah. Here's your believing, yeah. Yeah. and it's believing is causing you to see the goodness of the Lord, even yeah. if it isn't in manifestation yet. But that waiting, it's that believing you that's sustaining you in that waiting, and that waiting that's sustaining you in that course of time. Yes, yes, yes. Anyway, it's just becoming so clear, and and taking this attitude of I, I refuse to quit. Yeah. I I won't quit. I won't be pressured into quitting. Uh, one thing I had come up in my heart just in in light of you being a, you and I sitting here together and talking about these things. I was thinking back when I was 16 years old. And I wanted a car bad, <laughs> in a yeah. bad way. Yeah. Uh, and I just, I wanted it, I wanted to go get it, and I had a little bit of money, mm -hmm. not very much, mm -hmm. not enough for anything decent. Yeah. And um, you know, you and mom sat me down, and this is what we're gonna do, we're gonna believe God, and you know, we're not going to go into debt. And um, in last week's broadcast, talked a lot about how the assignment of pressure on your life, is it comes to press you yeah. out of what God has called you yeah. to, to pressure yeah. you into quitting. And most people are making decisions in their life, one pressured decision right after another. Sure. And we looked at Jesus, how, ha how Jesus handled pressure, how He handled pressure from people, religious leaders, how He handled the pressure of time, uh, when Lazarus, word came to him that Lazarus was sick. Oh, man. So what did he do? Jump and run? No. Uh -uh. Stayed two days. What does that mean? Jesus is not going to let sickness and disease pull him around That's and tell right. him where to go. That's right. And I refuse to be pressured by time. And you know that whole story. He got there. Lazarus been dead four days. Still, no time pressure. See, time is constantly telling you, you either hurry, need to hurry up right. or you're already too late. Yeah. That's the pressure of time. <clears throat> And we're looking at how Jesus responded to that pressure. Yeah. Because um, the life of patience is living unresponsive to pressure. So what did he do when the religious leaders came in and threw that woman at his feet? And they said, she's caught in adultery. Law says stoner, what do you say? What did he do? He waited. Yeah, he did. He waited and they kept asking him and kept asking and he waited. They were really pressuring him too. And it was pressure. I, I read that today. That was our scripture reading for today and I read it in the New Living. Mm -hmm. And boy, they were just pushing on him for an answer. Yeah. And the assignment on that pressure was to bring an end to his ministry. Yeah. Yeah. Because think about it. There are two, this is what pressure does. It comes to you and says, here, you got two bad choices. Which is it going to be? That's what pressure comes to do. That's good. And the Word yeah. says, we're pressed on every side, but we're yeah. not crushed. Yeah. So Jesus, what did He do? He waited. He waited on wisdom. Oh, that's so good. Patience that's is so learning good. to wait on wisdom. Yeah. And here they are pressing, pressing, pressing. But you know what the Scripture says? He bent down and started playing in the dirt. <laughs> and it says, as though He did not hear them. Yes. Do you know, you can live yes. as yes. though you yes. don't yes. hear the pressure. Yeah. Jesus responded not to the pressure, but to the wisdom of God. Yeah. He didn't respond to sickness. He didn't respond to the pressure of time. I'm going to stay here until my father says move. 
back to me as a 16 year old. Yes, 16. Here I am wanting this car so badly. And I came to you and I said, Dad, I don't understand. I've got some money. Why can't we just put a down payment on something? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'll pay it off. I just need this car. I want this car. Mm -hmm. And I so, I remember this so clearly. We were in the living room of 8525 Lake Country Drive. <laughs> I remember it so clearly. And you just said, Jeremy, there's just a better way to do it. And you could probably sense the pressure I was under, yes. even as a 16-year-old kid. Yeah. It was my first experience with money pressure. And, and I, I recall that now. Now I'm so thankful that that was the way that you guys brought us up and that was the way you decided we were going to live life, this higher way. Yeah. Because now what I'm seeing is that debt is pressure. Yeah. And the real sad thing about it is it's you putting yourself under pressure right. from somebody else. Right. And, and I, I, I thought I might just ask you to share a little bit about that, specifically regarding money. Yeah. Papa, I heard him say something. You were in the room when he said this to me the other day. He said, you know, when you make decisions based on money, yeah. you'll be wrong 90% of the time. But when you base the decision on the anointing, you'll be right 90% of the time. And even when you miss it, God, with the heart that you had to please him, can make yeah. it right. Yeah. I wondered if you might just talk for a minute about how to live unresponsive to the money pressure. Well, the money pressure comes, um, you know, there's a scripture over in uh, Matthew. Let's take a look at that really mm -hmm. quick. <clears throat> over in Matthew, and it talks about this, this whole issue of money. Um, Matthew 6, 24. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I had to make a decision about that. Um, and watching, watching Papa, watching Kenneth all of these years, studying him, I've watched him under every kind of situation imaginable. I mean, you talk about a, um, a, a flight simulator. Well, I've watched him actually walk out these things, and I've seen the pressurized times. Mm -hmm. I've seen the times when we were $6 million behind, and we were having to, to face the paying of $2 million dollars the TV bills. Mm -hmm. And what did he do? And how did he act? And how did he respond to it? And there's a place that you can get where you get so rock solid in who you are, what you believe, what you see, that you can, you can actually get to a place where pressure has absolutely no effect on Praise you whatsoever. Yeah. And I've watched that through the years. I've seen that patience rise up on the inside of him. Um, I'm thinking about right now, this doesn't necessarily have to do with the money part, although it was pressurized to us. It was back when the Senate Finance Committee was, was on us about some different things. And I was in a meeting here at the ministry and we had a group of people around the table. We had our attorneys that were there. And I'm watching Papa, I'm watching him respond to these things. And they were telling us that, that 60 Minutes was knocking on our door. Mm -hmm. They said, if you don't if you, they were saying, if you don't um, give us an interview, we're just going to do a story on you. Talk about pressure. Sure. I mean, you and I have not had 60 minutes knocking on our door no. telling, if you don't give an interview, mm -hmm. then we're going to go ahead and do one. I mean, <laughs> that's, pressure. That's time pressure, 60 it's minutes. It's <laughs> 60 minutes. Um, and, and I watched Paul Paul, and yeah. I saw him respond. And we got people around the room saying, we're, we're going to, we're go, we'll go ahead and train you. We'll help you. We'll tell you what you're going to say in this interview. And so we got through the, this was like a four, four hour meeting, mm -hmm. got to the end of the day. The next day happened to be a board meeting. So, so Kenneth came to John and me the next morning in that board meeting and he cornered the two of us. And he said, I went before the Lord about this last night. And the Lord told me that my my place of communication is not 60 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's the Word of God. God. And He told me not to do that, so I'm not doing it. And you know, Jeremy, that was 2006, mm -hmm. uh, when 2007, when all of that took place. And you know, uh, what happened was in the nation, I mean, just the, the whole financial situation collapsed in the nation mm -hmm. and they had no more interest in us yeah. and it just went away. And I saw a man not fold 
under that pressure. And where finances are concerned, you have to make a decision, the same kind of a decision that mom and I made about this. In Matthew 7, 24, no man can serve two masters, for he will, he will either hate the one and love the other, or else he'll hold to the one and despise the other. Yeah. You cannot serve God and mammon. And we made the decision, we are serving God. We are not serving money. Yeah. And we made a decision of quality that we were not going into debt. And, you know, it talks about in the book of Proverbs the, the fact that train up a child in the way he should go. When he get old, gets older, he'll not depart. The borrower is the servant to the lender. Yeah. And so those two scriptures are hooked together. So our determination was, okay, we are determined that we're going to trust God, go to God. We're finished with the bank. Mm -hmm. We're not going to look to the bank. And the responsibility we had was to pass that along to you and Aubrey. Praise God. To give that to you so that you will never bow your knee to a banker. Yeah. But that you will walk in a place of the fullness of God's blessing. Yeah. And I'm so thankful. I, I say this with just absolute thanksgiving to the Lord and to you guys. Uh, we've never had a car payment. Praise and I think <laughs> I, it seems like a little deal, but you know what? Yeah. I think it goes yeah. back to being a 16 year old kid yeah. and just letting my dad help me make some decisions for my life. There's just a better way. There's, a better, There's way. a better and way. And Jeremy, you did something when you were probably about 11 or so or 12. We were sitting in the same living room together having a family meeting. We were trying to sell the caravan, that I first remember. Dodge yeah. caravan that we had. And we couldn't do it. We put it out there to try to sell, couldn't sell it. You had a word from the Lord. And you said, I think we need to sew this car into the school that you were going to at the time. And mom and I looked at each other and that was a word from mm. the Lord. Praise God. That was a word from God. And so it took the pressure off. Yeah. We're trying to sell this thing. Yeah. And a word, one word from God will take the pressure yeah. completely off. And that's what happened that day. You know, when you realize that faith or patience accompanies faith yeah. in the same way pressure accompanies fear. And so yeah. many yeah. money decisions are being made, not at the leadership of the spirit, but out of, out of fear. fear either putting yeah. pressure on yeah. somebody else to meet your need or accepting pressure from somebody else. Yeah. And, you know, I think a lot of people watching this probably think, man, they sure talk about Kenneth Copeland a lot. <laughs> well, here's the deal. You know, he's the example the Lord's put in our life. Yeah. The truth is there are men and women all over the world, generations past, sure. generations sure. to come that are walking and living the same thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm thankful for the one the Lord's shown us. And I think about this uh, verse out of Acts chapter 20. Let me read this to you quickly as we begin to wrap this up. Uh, Paul says, you know, from the first day that I came to Asia in what manner I always lived among you, serving the Lord with all humility, with many tears mm -hmm. and trials. Yeah. Count it yeah. all joy when you fall into various <laughs> trials, which happened to me by the plotting wow. of the Jews, how I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaimed it to you and taught you publicly from house to house, testifying to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And see, now I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, yeah. except, or I know this, that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city saying that chains and tribulations await me, verse 24, but none, none of, these, of things these things move me. Move me. Oh, that's wonderful. They don't yeah. move me. Yeah. Pressure comes to move you. Yeah. But Jesus was only moved by compassion. And I want you to get an image of that. I am immovable. That's what patience means. That's what it that's means. That's what endurance means. I yeah. am immovable. I am not that's wavering good. and I will, lot, I will not let time. I will not let sickness. I will not let money. <coughs> I will not let people press me or move me. I am yeah. moved only yeah. by the word of the Lord. None of these things move me, nor do I count my life dear to myself so that I may finish. There's endurance. I may finish <laughs> my race with joy. Yeah. It's this joy yeah. connection. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. just everywhere yeah. you look. And on this broadcast again today, I'm joined by my dad, Pastor George Pearson. Thank my you, son. sir, once again for this being great. I, on this broadcast it. with this me. I really appreciate uh, you canceling those meetings that you <laughs> <laughs> scheduled oh, to be in. <laughs> gee, I canceled the meeting. Yeah, well, you know, uh, you'd rather be doing this anyway. This right? is a lot of fun to me. It really and, is. And we have really been having is. fun. And I think. Yeah. Man, when, when the, the light comes on, yeah. 
we've been talking so much about the joy, the joy connection. Uh, yes. Been reading in James, count it all joy, even in the middle of trials. How do you do that? Because you know something. Yeah, something's Because you something's know coming. what's coming. Yeah. And even in the middle of trials, you can put a smile on your face yes. and give glory to God, not for the trial, but because of the way you turn out. That's right. And I'm gonna let patience have its perfect work in me and I am going to be perfect. And like Jerry Savelle, you know, patience is what happens between the air, amen and there it is. What takes place in that time span is yeah. so crucial. Sure. It's so critical. And I've seen that over the years that, and I wish I knew this earlier. And the, and the great thing about you and Aubrey and what you guys are doing is that you, you've learned things as we've brought you up and you've learned these things for yourselves, walking in them yourselves. And I look back and I see things that I've been through that I didn't have that joy. I was really struggling with that. Mm -hmm. But at least now, as I go through things in, in my life, in my older age, I do have that joy because I know how this thing is going to turn out. Mm -hmm. I know what's going to happen. <laughs> Something just popped into my mind yesterday. We were talking about Sarah being pregnant mm -hmm. and how you, the expansion and mm -hmm. how it's just, and how that expansion of the vision just grows on the inside. Mm -hmm. And that's the important thing, that that vision grow on the inside. And I was talking to a friend of mine who, who is a minister, and he was saying one time a, a guy came up to him. He'd been hearing him preach on this series of messages, and this other pastor came up to him and was crying. Hmm. And I've never heard this before. He came to me and he says, my water broke. I'm like, oh. oh. Okay. <laughs> and that's, you know, the, the image of, of a, <laughs> A, a person who's spiritually pregnant. Right. I'd never heard that phrase before. <laughs> never want to hear it again. Yeah, but well, sure. but the, the process of delivering that vision yeah. and what happens, I mean, Sarah's not upset. She's not, and by now, well, here, li little girl is born, but but all the time well that you're on spending. The way. She's almost here. Almost yeah, here. Yeah. So all of that time span is spent, the joy, the joy that yeah. your mother and I experienced when you and Aubrey were, were in the womb and the excitement that we had, we didn't wait until you were born to get your room ready. Right. Oh my gosh, we gotta get close for this kid. No, there was a preparation mm -hmm. all the way through and we had our faith going and it haven't, we, we were expecting. Yeah, and Sarah right now, I mean, she's glowing. Yeah. You know, and they say that yeah. about pregnant. Oh, you got the pregnant glow. But she really is. Yeah. She's just radiant. She's beautiful. And what I think it is, is it's yeah. the joy of yeah. expectation. And you've got the glow. Look at you. Look at me. You've got, you've got vision on the inside of yeah. you. I have vision on the inside of me. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Lord put down on the inside. He spoke this to me. Church of 10,000. Mm -hmm. So we're believing for 10,000 people right now. You know what else he put on the inside of me? He said, George, I want you to believe me for an, an, an additional $10 million over and above your income. Mm -hmm. I'm pregnant with that. That's right. I'm excited about that. Am I under pressure over it? No. Right. Why? I'm operating in the place of patience. Now, the day after he told you that, how many extra millions did you have? It, right. Yeah. It's easy to say. <laughs> so there is this, there's that waiting time. And it's so, it's so funny. Yeah. And I think the, the illustration that's yeah. even here in the word about uh, uh, the, the same way waiting does not diminish a pregnant mother. Yeah. It's a perfect illustration because if you think about it, we get so frustrated waiting for yeah. all these other things. But I am so thankful yeah. for the nine months. Yeah. I'm so grateful. Yeah. I'm so thankful that we did not There's find Jimmy. out Sarah was pregnant and then the next day have a baby. I would not have known what to do with myself. I had nine months to try to wrap my brain and <laughs> around when, being a daddy. When Justice was being born, when Eileen, when Kaylin was being born, others in the family, mm -hmm. you know, we go into that hospital and we take over. Mm -hmm. I rearrange the room. Okay, obsessive, <laughs> but what? And we bring food in there. And it is, an, the waiting room is an atmosphere of joy. There you go. I mean, we're communicating back and forth. It's almost there. We're almost there. We're almost right. there. And when, when the, I remember specifically when Justice was born, there was an eruption mm -hmm. of, of just great joy in the waiting room. Yeah. And that's the way we should be in the waiting room. Right. That, that anticipation mm -hmm. of, man, it's here. Amen. I, I've been wanting us to get to something. I, <laughs> this has gotten so big on the inside of me. I, I want to look at something in the book of Luke. So go there with me, Luke chapter 15. Um, let's, I'll tell you what, let's look at Luke 15 and 
before we do that, I want to go back to something we've also read in uh, Hebrews. So look at, uh, this has been one of our foundational scriptures, in Hebrews chapter 6. Well, it used to be in here. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 6. And just to remind us once again what we've been talking about, he says in verse 11, we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. In other words, because of the work of the Spirit of God in you, mm -hmm. who Jesus said would show you things to come, mm -hmm. you see what the end looks like. Yeah. And even if you don't know all the detail, yeah. you know I have a promise yeah. from the Word that if I do not quit, but I'll be energized by God-given patience. That's it right there. That's, and that's it. That's the wonderful thing about it. See, we've been so limited in our understanding of patience to think either you have it or you don't or it's some character personality quality. No, this is a supernatural work of God. It is God who both works in you to will and to do His yeah. good pleasure. And this is yeah. powerful stuff. Yeah. And it's taking you through to the end, not halfway in quitting, not quitting the moment it gets tough, not quitting when uh, what you think is too much time has gone by, yeah. but the full assurance of hope to the end, that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience, yes. these go together, faith and patience inherit mm -hmm. the promises. Mm -hmm. I'm really thankful that the Lord used this word inherit because I believe obviously it's the right word. Yeah. Let's think about what an inheritance is. Sure. Because if that's what we're moving towards, if God has given you a word or He's given you an image on the inside of what life looks like, perfect, complete, lacking nothing, what life looks like with so much grace abounding towards you that it's not only coming to you, it's now going through you into the lives of other people. I mean, that's what this thing is really about. Yep. That is what it, what it is to uh, grow in the grace of God. Um, you know, Jesus... Uh, people say we don't know much about his life uh, as a child. Uh, he sort of picks up oh. birth and then 30, but you find out. It's amazing. What he did his whole childhood, his whole teenage years, his entire 20s, growing in wisdom, yep. in stature, yeah. and in favor. That word favor is grace. Jesus for 30 years yes. was growing in grace. Yep. Talk about patient. 30 years growing in grace. He, I guess he could have, you know, raised the dead as a six-year-old. Yeah. That certainly would have got people's attention, right? I mean, what if he was a preteen opening blind, blind eyes? <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't yeah. that happen? Yeah. Wasn't done growing in grace. Yeah. He was not done growing in grace, and yeah. he grew in grace and grew in grace and grew in grace to the point where John chapter 1 finally said, and we received of his Fullness, yes. grace upon grace. Jesus wow. got so full of the grace yeah. of God that yeah. that's what began to come out of him. Yeah. People around us, people around you are getting whatever you're full of. <laughs> <laughs> and you are either full of the grace of God yeah. Yeah. or you're full of yourself. Yeah. Well, like Brother Keith says, what do you leave in your wake? Sure. You know, yeah. we've been on the lake before when people have driven by fast yeah. or have been nice. Yeah. So what, what's in us yeah. comes out around others. That's absolutely right. And yeah. growing in this grace. Yeah. Um, we're, I, I read this here about uh, faith and patience. That's what it takes to inherit the promise. That's yeah. what it takes to, yeah. to walk in this vision that the Lord's put on the inside of you. You have, you've grown in <laughs> grace to the place where now you're perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Uh, and it takes faith accompanied by patience to inherit that. Yep. And what a beautiful picture inheritance is. Because if you think about it, an inheritance is, well, let's, let's use you and I. I'm your son. Yep. And uh, <laughs> my inheritance is something that belongs to me, mm -hmm. but you worked for it. It belongs yeah. to me, yep. but I didn't work for it. That's inheritance. That's inheritance. And that's grace. That's it. Something, yeah. well, grace is something that belongs to us that Jesus worked for. Yeah. Jesus earned it. Jesus sweat for it. Jesus bled for it. Jesus died for it. He deserves it. And because I'm found in Him, 
I get what he deserves. Yep. That's my inheritance. Yeah. But I want to look at this in Luke chapter 15. Let's, let's connect now patience with inheritance. Look at verse 11. Jesus is telling a parable. And he said, a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. Now, really, there's no problem with this in essence, because he, all he's saying is, I just want what's mine, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He's asking yeah. for his inheritance. Yeah. I just want what belongs to me. But there's a problem here. He asked for it and he got it at the wrong time. He literally came to his dad and said, Dad, I can't wait till you're dead. <laughs> he did, didn't he? Talk about a total <laughs> lack of patience is to go to his own father and say, uh, Dad, here's the deal. I can't wait till you're dead. And yeah. I, I don't really want to wait around that long. So I'm going to go ahead and need what's already mine. And his dad gave it to him. Mm -hmm. Now, it was his, mm -hmm. but he got what was his at the wrong time. And of course, you know how this turns out. It says he divided uh, to them, to the two sons, his livelihood. And not many days after, the young man gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his yeah. possessions with prodigal living. Other translations say unrestrained living. This, this, you're not quick to recognize the connection here, but think about it. Mm -hmm. Unrestrained living. What's that mean? It means he gave his flesh whatever his flesh pressured him right, for. Right. That's what the word lust means. We've been short-sighted in it. We just have associated lust with a, you know, a sexual sin of right. some kind. But it really just means pressure. Yeah. And he took everything that was his, his inheritance, but because he had it at the wrong time, he wasted it. And he wasted it by spending it outside of its proper assignment. Mm -hmm. Every That's dollar good. that comes That's into good. your life, every dollar that comes into my life, I'm, I'm, I'm living under this revelation right now. Yeah. Every dollar that comes into my life, <clears throat> every dollar that comes into my ministry has an assignment. And it is my, it's my joy, but it's my obligation to find out, okay, Lord, mm -hmm. what's this assigned mm -hmm. to do? Mm -hmm. I am not at liberty to go spend it on whatever I want to spend it on. Yeah. I am not at liberty to take what God assigned as seed and meet my own need with it. Right. You know what that is? Right. Misappropriated funds. And I'm not at liberty to do that. Yeah. I have to find out what's <laughs> the assignment on it. And yeah. what happened here was this young man, all he did was get what was his. And you're listening to that going, yeah, what's so wrong with that? That's what I want. I just want what's mine. Here's the problem. Yeah. He got it at the wrong time. Now, there's a revelation here, and that is this. You and I are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. What's that mean? It means I'm rich. I am so rich. I am so wealthy beyond even my own imagination. Mm -hmm. I am so abundantly supplied. I am so abundantly healed. I am so abundantly set free and abundantly full of the joy and the peace of God. But there's something about this when it comes to physical, tangible, natural supply, mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. There's a timing issue. There's timing involved there. Yeah. Now, part of my inheritance is healing. And that healing belongs to me. Yeah. And when symptoms of sickness and disease come into me or my family, I have every right to go put pressure on the Word of God and make my stand and sure. say, Demand I am healed in the name of Jesus and healing be now. Yeah. Now, what happens if I don't see it right away? Now, patience happens. And I, faith is believing I'm healed. Patience is continuing to believe I'm healed. The, the best illustration of this that I can think of in my own life is uh, just in the last, well, within the last two years, as the Lord's begin to unfold to Sarah and I what it is we're supposed to be walking in. He's put vision on the inside of us. He yeah. has shown us the need for land yeah. and a place to build. Yeah. He's talked to us about that. And so we, man, we got excited about that. And that that's actually several years old, but just within the last couple of years, we 
you, uh, we saw a place. You know, I remember we showed it to you guys. Mm -hmm. and we saw a place yeah. and we went and looked at it. It's a beautiful place, a lot of land, had a great house on it. And we thought, this might be it. This may be it. And got real <laughs> excited about it. And we're yeah. before the Lord, is this yeah. it? Is this it? Now, here's the deal. They, they wanted, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of $4 million for it. But hey, what do I care? I'm a rich man, right? <laughs> yeah. now, now, I didn't have $4 million, but I had yeah. faith in Jesus. Sure. And um, so we're looking at this place and, we're, is, man, is this it? Could this be it? And then it sold to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> and so it, it, was, it was really cool, though, because we didn't lose our joy. Yeah. We didn't get depressed. We thought, okay, Lord, t talk to us about what's going on here. What we have seen since that time, because we've seen several other places since then, but what we have learned was that the Lord showed us that. Yeah. I know He showed us that. He showed us that to say, first of all, you got to lift your vision. That was the most beautiful thing we had ever looked at and ever imagined that could be ours. We had to lift our vision. Then we had to see, you're going to need something like this. And then the next place we saw added something else to the vision. Then the next place we saw added something else to the vision. Yeah. Now it's gotten to the place we've yeah. been talking about being enlarged. Yes. If I look back at that first place we saw, never would have been able to handle what we want to yeah. do yeah. and what the Lord wants us to do. And I, I've made this statement, and it sounds funny, and, and I, you, maybe you've never heard yourself say this, but I am so thankful that I did not have $4 million. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a mistake. I'd have made yeah, a $4 that's million it. Dollar that's mistake. It. Yeah. I, I, I really would have thought, well, you know, here the, here's yeah. the money for it. But here's the thing. I'm a possessor of heaven and earth. And when it comes time to have what I need yeah. to meet that need, yeah. I'll have it. Yeah. But I'm not pressured by time. See, inheritance, there's a timing issue involved in sure. it. And this young man got his inheritance, but because there was no patience, can't wait till you're dead, give it to me now, mm -hmm. it nearly ruined his life. And if it wasn't for the mercy of God, it would have. And then in light of all that, I was just reading in the book of Proverbs one day and came across this scripture in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 21. In the New Living Translation, it says, An inheritance obtained too early in life is not a blessing in the end. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, that's very that's interesting. That's crystal clear to me. Yeah. And, and yeah. I wanted to encourage everyone who's watching and listening to this. You've got a vision from God. I know you do. And you're looking at it and you're looking at what it's going to take to meet that need. But listen to me. You'll have it when it's time to have it. Mm -hmm. Don't cast away your confidence. Don't throw away your faith. Yeah. There is a timing element involved yeah. when it comes to receiving this inheritance. Yeah. And that timing element is patience. Yeah, it is. Can I read this scripture? Yeah. This Galatians 6, 9 uh, from the King James. And let us not be weary in well-doing, mm -hmm. for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. In due season. In due season. And then it says in the Amplified, let us not lose heart or grow weary and faint in acting nobly and doing right. For in due time at the appointed season mm -hmm. we shall reap yep. if, if, we do not loosen and relax our courage and faint. So good. Patience. Don't quit. Don't quit. And the Lord so Don't blessed quit. me. In light of all that, back then when we were looking at that property and things we've seen since then, I remember one day the Lord just spoke to my heart and He said, Jeremy, this has never been about the money. Mm -hmm. It's always been about the timing. Yeah. Never been yeah. about the yeah, money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always good. Always been about That's the timing. That's good. And the, you know what that did? You know what that caused me to do? It caused me to rest. That's the Lord looking out for me. That's the Lord keeping my wife and I from making some sure. big financial mistake. He's watching over us. It's never been about the money. It's always been about the timing. That's right. Perfect. So bless me to Perfect. hear him say that. That's really good. Now here's That's what's really good. Now, let, now let's bring this all full circle right. right here. Back to James chapter one in these closing moments. James yeah. chapter one. This is what we've been reading nearly every day for a week and a half. Brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect. Mm -hmm. We know the word perfect means mature. Complete. The word complete means retaining everything you were given 
by inheritance. Ah, that's good. That's what the word means. That's it. To be able to hold on to everything yeah. you were given by inheritance. That's because that young man lacked patience. Now, of course, yeah. that parable is the greater point there is about the love sure. and the compassion sure. and the grace of God. But I see that as in that text, be patient. Good. Be patient. And when you get it at the right time, you'll keep it. Yeah. And you won't waste it. Yep. My dad is here with us again today. Dad, thank you so much. Awesome. Pastor awesome. Dad Pearsons. Uh, I, I believe this was uh, an appointment from the Lord to have you be a part of this because as we've been studying what it is to be patient, what it is to endure. I look back across the testimony of your life, uh, the, the part of it that I witnessed and, and even the testimony of it that you've shared from yeah. well before I got here. Do you remember yeah. a time before I got no, here? It's I hard. Don't. No, it's, it's, well, it was <laughs> there. Life I'm without sure. Jeremy. Yeah. Just... How can you imagine? <clears throat> but uh, I'm just thankful. I'm <laughs> thankful that the Lord has put people in my life. I'm thankful that uh, He put you in my life and me in yours because I think you have been an outstanding testimony and example of what uh, a life of patience will produce. And, and I'm, I am thankful for the mind renewal that is taking place because patience is not just sitting idly by. I think too often we've confused patience with doing nothing and yeah. that's just not the case. Yeah. Patience is, is persevering. Patience is yeah. endurance. Patience is not just believing, it's continuing to believe. And um, you know, Jesus talked about this when he said the sower sows the word. Yeah. And he talked about the different kinds of ground that the word fell on. And he said it fell on the wayside and that's the kind of ground uh, didn't even sink in. He said there was no understanding. There was no value of the word and Satan came immediately mm -hmm. to steal it. Then he said it fell on stony ground. It fell among thorns. Then he said it fell on good ground. And that good yeah. ground was the yeah. only word or the only ground that the word could produce in. And that stony ground, that's, that's ground that's just got a shallow, shallow layer of earth with a hard layer of stone underneath. And he said it, it, mm. it uh, was planted and it came back up, but it didn't have depth of earth. Right. There was no depth right. to get rooted. And he said, those are the people that hear the, hear the word and they receive it with joy. Amen. Woohoo. Yeah. That's good. Good word, yeah. preacher. Yeah. But then when persecution comes for the word's sake, well, what is that? Pressure. Pressure. That's pressure. Yeah. Pressuring what you believe. Pressuring yeah. what you believe to be true from pressure from other people. Pressure from circumstances. He said when that pressure comes because they had no root, root. Yeah. he said they did not endure. Yeah. No endurance no patience, no promise. You can't receive the promise without faith and patience. And this, this is interesting because when you look back at what the Spirit of God said, you and I are to be rooted and grounded in, what is it? Love. Where there's no revelation of how much you're loved, yeah. you won't be able to endure. Yeah. Patience comes out of a revelation if my God loves me, mm -hmm. and if my God loves me, and my God is for me, what is all this? What are, what are these tribulations? Yeah. What are these trials? My God loves me enough yep. to get me through this thing. And we've been talking about the power that's in patience. And I, I can give you one verse that I believe says it all. This is the source of the power in patience. And it's in 1 Corinthians 13. And the very first thing that the Spirit of God tells us that love is, is patient. Love good. is yeah. patient. That's good. How do I know patience is powerful? Because that's what love is. Yeah. The most powerful yep. force on <clears throat> this planet is the love of God to man. Yes. And that love is patient. I've been reading back through a lot of these scriptures. We've talked about us being patient, but you know, Jesus is our example for everything. Sure. Our sure. ultimate example. And he said, uh, or it was said about him in Hebrews chapter 12, he said, you lay aside the weight. What's well, weight? Pressure. Yeah. <laughs> lay aside the yeah. weight, the sin that so easily besets you, and run with patience, run with endurance, the race that's set before you, looking unto Jesus. Mm -hmm. There's, there is the energizing force to your faith, the energizing force to your patience, eyes on Jesus. <laughs> 
Peter could walk on water (laughs) until his eyes got off Jesus. Put your eyes on Jesus. He is your example. What was his example of patience? Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. He refused to quit, even in that garden, pressured by that situation. If there's any way this cup can pass from me, but then that voice of the Spirit of God inside of him rose up and said, not my will, but yours be done. And think about that moment. He fell to the ground in agony to the point where great drops of blood began to drip from his from his skin. Yeah. What is that? Yeah. That is a literal medical condition. I think it's thrombosis or something like that. You can look it up in the Greek. It's a blood condition to where your blood, yeah. your blood pressure increases so much that it begins to clot and it just begins to to ease out from the surface of your skin. Think about the pressure he was under. Intense, intense. But for the joy that was set before him. Yeah. Because how much he loved his father, how much his father loved him, and how much they both loved me. And I think I've heard you preach about that joy that was set before him. That was us. That was us. (laughs) We were the joy that was set before him. Yeah. And because of that, he endured. Yeah. He endured. That's that patience, that, that force of patience. Yeah. And where's that power come from? Right here. Love is patient. Yeah. What's the Amplified say? Yeah. Love is patient and endures long. Yeah. I think that's what it yeah. is. Yeah. I just, I love the, the, I love the love of God. <laughs> yeah. He, he, listen well, it brings to this. Such, it's such confidence. Yeah. It's such confidence that, again, between that time, that you're standing, there is an overwhelming sense of the love of God Mm -hmm. that everything is going to be okay. Everything is going to work out. He's watching over me. And that love, that revelation of the love of God really does root and ground you so that you can stand patiently. Well, that's a good picture. Throughout that. Just grounded. Yeah. Immovable. Yeah. Yeah. That's what patience is. Yep. Praise God. Yeah. Our patience, the source for our patience, for others and with others, is His patience with us. Yeah. <laughs> Think yeah. about how patient God has been <laughs> yeah. with us. <laughs> you yeah. know? Um, <clears throat> listen to this <clears throat> from Ephesians chapter 4. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Mm. This out of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. May the Lord lead your hearts into a full understanding and expression of the love of God yeah. and the patient endurance that comes from Christ. Oh, that's good. How much good. does my Father love me? Yeah. <clears throat> I think one of the defining messages that you ever gave was my Father loves me. Mm. I know you still have people to this day talk to you about that series and that message that you preached as a pastor. My Father yeah. loves me. Yeah. Take us in. No, I just, I just uh, <clears throat> actually preached on that not too long ago. We, Papa and I were at a meeting in uh, Tulsa mm-hmm. to a Burmese community of people. And I mean, we had a, 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 a interpreted there for us. And the Lord just led me to preach on that subject, My Father Loves Me. I was preaching in Peru, uh, Lima, last year. And the Lord led me to preach on the Father's love. And to, to come to a place of knowing how much the Father loves me. And I, and I have to say that uh, what has helped me so much under the, the pressures that I've been under, the different things that I've experienced and walking this patience out, that stand of faith has really been rooted and grounded in the fact that my Father loves me. He loves me. And <clears throat> it was actually back... A number of years ago, I had gone to Massachusetts to see your grandmother and grandfather, my parents, to visit them. And I'd gotten to a place in ministry where, um, you know, I was at the time executive director here, and my life just seemed to become so, well, no, actually, I was pastoring and doing that at the same time. (laughs) And, And there was a lot of pressure associated with that. And you know something? I found that I had lost that connection with my father. I lost that fellowship with him. It had all become so business-like. Uh, preach another message, have another outreach, and just the heart of it was, was gone. Mm-hmm. And I was dissatisfied in my relationship with him. There was a dissatisfaction, not with him, 
but in the, the lack of my fellowship with my father. And I wanted that back. So I was getting ready for this trip. And on the way out the door, I, I, back then it was a cassette tape. I just pulled this cassette tape and it was Keith Moore's message on God loves me. Mm -hmm. I started listening to that, getting that down on the inside of me. And I checked in at the Daniel Webster <laughs> Hotel, uh, Daniel Webster Inn uh, near where my parents lived. And um, went to bed that night, was getting ready to get up in the morning, the next morning, and the Lord began to talk to me. He says, George, I want you to stay here. Don't get up. Don't get up, which was very unusual. I mean, the Lord telling you, don't get up from bed. It's usually get up, pray. <laughs> yeah, sure. But he said, I want you, I just want you to lay there for one hour, and I want you to meditate on how much I love you. And I did that. Mm -hmm. And I just started thinking about the Father's love. And Jeremy, that's where... This was back in about 1997 or so, and that was the, was the resurgence of a revelation of the love that the Father has for me. And I just laid there in the bed thinking, my Father loves me, my Father loves me. And faith began to grow on the inside. And he said this to me, which obviously I've never forgotten, but he said this to me. He said, George, there, there is not one more thing you can do that would make me love you any more than I love you right now. Mm. There's not another sermon you can preach. There's not another outreach you can have. There's not another thing you can do that would make me love you any more than I love you right now. And he began to talk to me about the richness of his love and the Father's love is, he is exhibiting his love in its fullness, yeah. his absolute fullness. So with that, in talking about this patience, I have come away from that experience knowing that whatever I'm dealing with, whatever I'm going through, whatever difficulty that we might be facing, I have this inward knowing of how much the Father loves yeah. me. What a revelation that yeah. is. And how that will sustain us during those times of pressure, things that we've been through, things that we've experienced, things that we've gone through. I know my Father loves me. Yeah. Without a doubt, He loves me with the fullness. Some people think that they'll experience the fullness of God when they get fullness of love when they get to heaven. That's available to us right now. Yeah. It's ours right now. And just the fact that He loves me just because He loves me. Yeah. For, for no other purpose, for no other reason than that, He loves me just because He loves me. And just listening to you, um, you know, talking about the love of God. You preached that on the broadcast just not too many weeks ago, and it just reinforced that on the inside. Mm -hmm. So loved. Yeah. So yeah. loved. And that just, uh, you know, it's just almost hard to describe how much of a sustaining yeah. power that has during the most pressurized moments. And I face those even in, in the, the years that followed. But I'll just sit there and just take a moment, close my eyes. My Father loves me. My Father loves me. My Father loves me. And, and I like what Brother Keith says about that. When you know how much the Father loves you, it will, it will buoy up yes, yes. your faith. Well, faith works by, by love. Faith works by love. And what the Lord showed me about that, and we, we have taken that scripture, rightfully so, this way, faith works by the love that we walk in and the love that we exhibit. But also he showed me that faith, my faith works by the knowledge of how much he loves me. Yeah, yeah. And how much he cares about me. And it just, it takes, it's a pressure remover yeah. for sure. It is. It lifts it lifts the pressure, having a knowledge of how much he loves me. Yeah. And that's what Romans chapter 8 uh, has been. It's the reason it's been such a big part in our lives. Um, I think about what he said there in, what is it, around verse 30, 31, 32. I mean, this whole thing yeah. is just yeah. a revelation of the love of God. Yeah. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, or you could say it like this, if God loves us, yeah. <laughs> who can be against us? <laughs> he didn't spare his own son, but delivered, us, delivered, delivered, us, delivered him up for us all. Yeah. How shall he not 
with him also freely give us all things. Who can bring a charge against God's elect? Is it God who justifies? I mean, on and on. Yeah. It's what yeah. he's done yeah. for you out of his love for you. And then you get down into verse 37. In all these things, we are more than conquerors yeah. through him yeah. who loves us. In verse 39, nothing can separate us from the, from the love, love of God, God. Wow. which is in Christ Jesus wow. our Lord. And even what we referred to a moment ago in the book of Ephesians about root, being rooted yep. and grounded yeah. in that. Yeah. His, that was a prayer he was praying. And he said, I pray that you would comprehend with all the saints. Yes. What yes. would church be like if all the <laughs> saints comprehended how much yeah. we were all loved? Yeah. I'll tell you what would go away is the little petty yeah. arguments, the, the, the little strifes that get in, the little divisions oh, that get in. Absolutely. If, if all the saints comprehended Absolutely. the length, the depth, and the height, and the breadth, and knew the love of Christ, it would change. Wow. I mean, it would change the atmosphere of our homes. It would yeah. change the atmosphere of church. If every believer believed yeah. how much he was loved. Jeremy, were you there? I'm trying to remember if you were there with us the night that this happened at Christmas, Christmas Eve, one of those nights we were over at Mimi and Pawpaw's house. It had been snowing that day. I mean, a massive mm -hmm. snowstorm. And I don't know if you, if you guys had left, but we were all getting ready to leave. I had my coat on. And, and help me remember if you were there, but it was such a stunning evening because we sat down, started talking with Papa in the living room just about spiritual things. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know how we got to this place, but he started looking around the room. Oh, yeah. Were you there uh, for that? Yeah, and I, what did he say? He I, said, I find, no, I find no fault in you. Yeah. He looked at me square yeah. in the eyes and he said, George, I find no fault in you. Yeah. Terry, I find no fault in you. And it, it, I mean, it almost brings me to tears right now mm -hmm. because first of all, it changed my relationship with him. Mm -hmm. That, my relationship with him has been different ever since, but I could hear the voice of the father looking at me, he, saying to me, George, I find no fault in you. Yeah. I find no fault in you. And there's such a confidence in relationship with the Father, when you know that you have that and you're rooted and grounded, established in that love with Him, mm -hmm. that no matter what happens, no matter what takes place, we're, we're going to make it through. Why? Because my Father loves me. Yeah. We've been talking for two weeks. I've been telling everybody about Sarah's new CD and, yeah. and, and uh, I'm thinking right now on this song, this, the Lord just gave her, and it's, there's a great story behind it, but um, almost like as we're going into the studio and and this the Lord really confirmed to her that she needed to do it but it's a song from him to us oh wow <laughs> and and it says um I will heal you oh yeah <laughs> it made me cry when I heard it I will heal you because I love you yeah I will lead you yeah. because I love you my child, just because, just because so I love good. you. And I think the chorus says something like, um, if you knew how I felt for you, you would wipe the tears from your eyes. If you knew how I wow. see you, you found only grace in my sight. And she played that to me in the studio. <laughs> and she looked around at me and like, do you like that? And I'm like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it was such a precious moment. Yeah. And yeah. what a revelation. I mean, the Lord said that to Moses and Noah and others. You found grace in my sight. Yeah. You found grace in yeah. my... And that's what Papa was saying. Yeah. This is how I see you. Yes. The yes. only place to find grace is knowing how the Father sees you. Yep. And, yeah. and that's, it's a comforting thing. Yes, it's a... You can tell it, it moves us even emotionally, but even beyond that, it's empowering. Yeah. That's where you yeah. find this supernatural ability to not quit. Yeah. I'm loved. I am loved. I am deeply, dearly, yes. madly yes. loved by my father. <laughs> my father loves me. My father loves me. And I, you maybe have heard me say this before, but if you have to, you go out and you pick a flower <laughs> and you start pulling off petal after petal. He loves me. He loves, he loves me. me. <laughs> he loves me. He loves me. And there will never, ever be as long as you live 
Hey, he loves me. I'm the pastor whom Jesus loves. Yes, he, yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. And it's the love of God yeah. that sustains us yeah. and equips us yeah. and causes us to endure. The Lord, this is Deuteronomy 7, 7, the Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because you were more in number than any people. For you are the fewest of all people. Mm. But because the Lord loves you, and the, the New Living Translation said, God loves me simply because he loves me. Yeah. What, what a magnificent Does he thought. need another reason? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's God. He could, it could be for any reason. And you know, in 1 John chapter 3, what does he say? Yeah. Behold. Yeah. What's Behold. that mean? Look at this. What manner of yeah. love the Father has oh. bestowed on us that we should be called the, the children the of God. The quality of his love. And the wow. Amplified adds, wow. and so we are. Yeah. We are his because he yeah. calls us his. He doesn't just love me. He likes me. Yeah. <laughs> even it if, sounds like Jesse. He likes me. He does. And even if nobody else did. That's right. He, he likes me. He does. And that's more than enough. Knew that there were things uh, on the inside of you um, in, this, in this vein, in this uh, line mm -hmm. that we've been studying in, in patience and endurance. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, anybody who's, who's been around especially the same place, yeah. pushing 40 years now, right? I mean, yeah. what, 37? Yeah, 37. Yeah. And uh, that takes some endurance. Yeah. That takes some patience. And, and your life is a testimony of the goodness of God and what God can do with somebody who will just yield to a life of faith yeah. and patience. So I really appreciate you taking the well, time Well, Jeremy, to thank you for asking me. This has just been a, a real treat for me able to do this with you. I, I just so enjoy... I, I've watched you in your ministry and how it's really developed. And now, uh, you know, there are things that, for instance, I have, you gave me your notes on grace. And I've been working off of those in church, awesome. just doing a series on great grace. And just, you, you really do have, there's such a depth on the inside of you that, that touches my heart, that touches the hearts of people. And, and I just so appreciate being able to be with you on this. I mean, it's really yeah. something to see your son which one day you'll, you'll see that. Yeah. You and justice will. I mean, you'll, it'll be just not too long from now when you look at justice and he'll be having conversations with you. And I, I asked him a few wow. weeks ago, I said, so you want to be a preacher like daddy when you grow up? And without missing a beat, you know what he said? Yeah. No, Joseph Pence. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph, Pitt. my son wants That's to. That's great. Yeah, it was great. That's you know? great. <laughs> well, I, I didn't even know he knew him, but uh, evidently, well, you know, yeah. I just remember when you you said to us one time. I mean, you're just li a little kid, three, and you said, "When Paul Paul sits down, I'll preach." Yeah. Wow. Uh, I'm glad I, mean, I didn't wait. Uh, yeah, really? <laughs> <laughs> I still be waiting. Yeah. So, and you know something else? It's very interesting, Jeremy. I was having a conversation with Papa, Papa Kenneth Copeland, yeah. um, just not too long ago, and we were talking about, we were talking about when the Lord spoke to him about the, the uncompromised word of faith going out on every available voice. Mm -hmm. Of course, he has a take on things. And he looked, and I'm thinking available voice. I said, I mean, the, the internet back in 1976 was not right. an available voice to us. He looked at me, he said, George, you're one of the available voices. Oh, wow. Jeremy's one of the available voices that's preaching the uncompromised. Your mother, Sarah, our family, one of the available voices that's preaching the uncompromised word of faith. So we have a legacy. Mm -hmm. You and I have a rich heritage. And that's why, Jeremy, I am so... When the Lord spoke to me years ago and said, you need to take the same word that, that Kenneth has given you, you need to give it to other people. And you and I are locked in to the responsibility of delivering this word to others. And that's the heritage that we've had. Mm. And if you will, I, I've got a couple of things I wanted to share with, with everybody about patience mm -hmm. and walking in that endurance. And first of all, if you know me well enough, I'm a, I'm a collector of fine definitions. <laughs> I have the finest definition collection at home. And patience, let me give you a couple of the definitions yeah. of patience that I've collected from the greats, Keith Moore, <laughs> Kenneth and Gloria, others. Um, what patience is not Patience is not knuckling under until the storm has passed over. Yeah. What patience is not, patience is not being satisfied with whatever happens. Patience is not getting beat up with a smile on your face. That was, <laughs> that was one of Papa's definitions. <laughs> what, what patience is, it undergirds and sustains your faith until the result is manifested. 
What is patience? It's the ability to act like you have it before you see it. And for those of you that are interested in the notes, all of these notes are online. You can go to the media section of kcm.org and we have all now 120 outlines. This one is day 66, prosperity and patience. They'll put it up on the screen so you can have these notes and refer to them. Uh, what patience is, it doesn't surrender to, surrender to circumstances or succumb under trial. It is constant all the time. It is courage under fire. It answers every doubt and fear with the assurance of God's Word. And I like this. This is one that Mimi, Gloria, said, Faith takes whatever you need and patience, patience keeps it. I like that. I think that's outstanding. Mm -hmm. And I learned something during a particular time that, that Mom and I were going through in our lives where our debt freedom was concerned. And as you, as you know, um, I was on the broadcast with Paul Paul. was right over there, mm -hmm. just a few feet from us was the fateful moment in time when, uh, you know, I was pressing in to get out of, getting out of debt and it was on that broadcast that day that Pawpaw said to me, now George, you had a house and you paid it off and you sewed it into somebody's life and you got out of debt and you went back into debt. He said, why did you go back into debt? And those words, why did you go back into debt just echoed in my ears and all, I was sitting there thinking to myself, this is good for me. This is good for me. I'm getting corrected worldwide. This is really good for me. And um, it, it, was an, it was an impetus and an inspiration for me just to really press in to this. And that's where mom and I were pressing in to getting out of debt. But I made a mistake early on. I made a mistake that when, when in the early days that I was going through that, I got under pressure about it. Mm. And you know, one of the scriptures that I use, Psalm 34, 19, many are the afflictions of the pre pressures of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. I got under pressure about the, the money that we borrowed to get into that house. And I'll tell you, there was a serious condemnation that, that tried to settle in and the devil was beating me up over that debt. And I wanted out of debt. I wanted out of debt right now. And I was struggling to get out of it. Well, during a, a month-long series of meetings that we had in here at the church, 30 Days of Glory, uh, I almost said Gloria. It was, <laughs> it was Gloria's idea because she came to me one day. She said, George, what would it be like to have church for 30 days? And I said, well, I don't know. Let's try. So we <laughs> did for that whole month, morning and night, except for Saturday mornings we had off. The rest of the time we did 30 Days of Glory. Well, during that time, Paul Paul got up, Kenneth got up to speak on a Sunday night and it was an outstanding message. And that message actually is in a series that's available right now. It's a 12 CD message called It's Time to Get Out of Debt. And I put that message in there because it changed my life. Mm. And what he preached on was yield to the plan and not to the pressure. Mm. Yield to the plan and not to the pressure. And Jeremy, I just want to read a couple of the notes that I took that night. It changed my life. It, it got me out of that pressurized situation and got me on a track of walking in the patience of God to patiently walk out our debt freedom. And instead of being under pressure during that time, we were actively using our faith. It was really a, a, a journey that mom and I were taking together that we're walking out of debt, we're going to be debt free, and we're going to live debt free. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> that night, this is what he said. He said, don't create unnecessary pressure for yourself. He said, settle this right now. He said, your debt cancellation plan is wrapped up in God's wisdom. Mm. And he used the scripture, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get, un get understanding. Wherever there is wisdom, then there will be an absence of pressure. Amen. Because you'll know what to do. If any man lacks wisdom. Let him ask. Any man that's fallen into various hey, That's exactly right. <laughs> let, let him ask of God. So <clears throat> he said, don't get impatient. Stay with it until you're out of debt. And one of the things that really lifted the pressure off of me, Jeremy, was when, when I went to Paw Paw about this, I sat down and I said, Kenneth, I know that I'm supposed to do this, but I, I, I'm experiencing this pressure about getting out of debt. And he said, George, the moment you made the quality decision to get out of debt, God saw you debt free. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, that's just lifted the pressure in me so that I can go, 
Okay, condemnation gone, yeah. pressure gone. Let's just walk this out now. Let's yeah. walk out this process. So he said, don't get impatient. Stay with it until you're out of debt. God sees the complete picture. You may be in a holding pattern for a reason. And then he uses the illustration about wanting to, to go up higher while flying, mm -hmm. requesting um, the ability to gain in, in, um, in altitude, height, yeah. altitude. And so he doesn't get mad at the controller mm -hmm. for not letting him go up. Um, it, it's like you were talking, I think it was yesterday, about the timing. Mm. The timing, or it was the day before, about the timing of, of the finances and all of that. Well, you may be in a holding pattern for a reason. He said, God may be wanting on, waiting on someone else to obey mm. where your debt freedom is concerned. He said, relax by faith. Mm -hmm. Relax by faith. You know, I... I have said that, I heard you quote this on the broadcast that I said, I refuse the pressure and stress. Mm -hmm. I choose instead to enter the rest. Yeah. And that came out of that time that we were believing God to get out of debt. I, I refuse the pressure and stress. Jeremy, every night before I go to sleep, this is what I say to myself. It's just been a habit that I've developed over the years. And I say this, and there are about five or six things that if I'm trying to go to sleep, I'll begin to say, and usually, by the time I'm through with this first one, I'm sound asleep. But this is what I say. My days of worry, care, anxiety, fretting, pressure, and stress are over mm -hmm. forever. There's been a change on the inside. And I just don't do life like I used to. Sure. I mean, there were horrendous times in this ministry that I took on the pressure and the care of a $6 million deficit or people that had to be dealt with or things like that. And you know, as you grow in this and that patience begins to develop, the force of patience on the inside develops, there's more of a settling. Mm -hmm. It's just a settling on the inside. And where did I get that? I was watching Papa do that. I just see a man that it's really hard to shake him <laughs> if he's shaken at all. Mm -hmm. I just don't see it. The man is settled in the patience of God. Mm -hmm. And I, I use this example about the Citation 10. How many times, Jeremy, at a believer's convention did we see on the big screen that Citation 10 flying and that lady singing Amazing Grace, yeah. Amazing Grace, yeah. and, you know, climbing in altitude year after year after year. And I remember one year, I, I sat there and thought to myself, how many years have we watched this same video? And that was when they didn't have the airplane. They didn't they have the airplane. The we did it. not have the airplane. We were just putting the vision. We were putting the vision before the people. But they saw themselves in that airplane. Mm -hmm. And then there was one year that we showed the manifestation of that airplane. But I watched, I watched Kenneth and Gloria walk through that, patiently walk through that. I saw them sow seed mm -hmm. towards that, reap harvest. I saw the Lord put that together and they were just rock solid. Mm -hmm. And you and I both have had the privilege and the opportunity of, of flying in that manifest vision, that, that fulfillment of the patience of God. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is a demonstration of patience right there. Yeah. And they didn't gripe complain or get upset. They just, they waited on the Lord and that thing was manifested. Yeah. So you have to relax by faith. When the pressure starts, press towards peace. That's what he said that night. Get in control and calm down. Learn to operate in low, slow. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Low, slow. Man, is the pressure on you right now? Are there things going on in your life right now? Are you standing on the word about something and it just seems like time, the clock is ticking? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you said to me back there a little while yeah, ago. Yeah. It's tick talking yeah. to you. <laughs> you are never going to make it. You are going to fail. I mean, that clock is just in your face. And he said, learn to operate in low, slow. Mm -hmm. And I remember him telling that story about Ain Eiley mm -hmm. and how you know, he was over at Nani, his mother's house, Vanetta Copeland, and 
Just got there from off the road, got a phone call. Ain't Eileen's in the hospital. She's about to die. We got to go, 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 go to the hospital. And the Lord was dealing with Kenneth. He said, mother, make me some eggs, eggs, make me some eggs. Kenneth, we can't eat eggs right now. We got to go to that. Well, he wasn't interested in eggs, but what he was doing was on purpose slowing down not getting caught up in the pressure, but slowing down. Man, I've learned from that. How many times have you and I been in the midst of something and we purposely slow down? And I practiced this in airports before, mm -hmm. that people are running. They are just rushing and you can get caught up in that momentum. And I have on purpose slowed down. Not that I was under pressure about something, but I just said, I'm going to practice low, slow. Mm -hmm. And I've seen Papa before. I've seen him in the midst of a pressure situation. And you're sitting there, whether it's something I brought to him as an executive director for those years, problems, things going on. And I've seen him do this before. I'll, I'll lay out the problem before him and I'll watch him do this. And I've been around people before that we've been in the same situation and they'll start to speak up and I'm like, shut up, shut <laughs> up, don't talk, don't talk. I've just been around them long enough and I just don't say a word and I know what's going on. Mm -hmm. The man has gone into low slow and he is the force of patience mm -hmm. has kicked in and he's waiting on the Lord for that answer. That's exactly, he's waiting for the wisdom of God. Had a situation that we dealt with in the ministry years ago, a, a personnel situation, just a real sticky wicket. I mean, just a, just a real situation that's gonna take the wisdom of God. So he said, George, come back in a week. We'll talk about it. I came back, he looked at me, he said, George, I, I took some time to pray in the spirit about this. Mm -hmm. And this is what the Lord has shown me. He started to lay it out and I thought, wow. Wow, that's the wisdom of God. No pressure, mm -hmm. but that time there was patience that he was operating. So you kick down into that low slow and say, I don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do a thing. He said, press through the wall of pressure with the wisdom of God. Stop pressing so much where getting out of debt is concerned. Press into the wisdom of God to know how to get out of debt. Quit trying to figure it out and get God's wisdom. Say, I receive God's wisdom and I know how to get out of debt. That's what we're doing in the time space called patience. Mm -hmm. The time continuum called patience. Those are the kinds of things that we're doing. And he said, when God's wisdom is known, the peace that passes understanding takes over. Wisdom takes the pressure off of the situation. Time deadlines don't mean anything to you. And the situation begins to look easier and easier and easier. Mm -hmm. I'm at a place right now, Jeremy, I'm believing for $10 million, $10 million over and above our operating budget. And you know something? It's, it's not a pressure to me. Mm -hmm. I'm exhilarated. Yeah. I'm believing God. I'm excited about it. I, I'm looking. I got checks in the mail. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got things happening. And that's, that's how you become in the midst of all of that. Let me give you this three-step process that Paul Paul gave me mm -hmm. that we've used over and over and over again. It's the three-step process to receive God's wisdom for whatever you're dealing right now, to get through that time. Stay in the patience of God. Get the wisdom of God on it. And here it is, number one, commit one to three days to pray about nothing else except God's wisdom concerning your situation. Has the clock been ticking? Has it been talking? <laughs> it's great. <laughs> to you, has, has it been speaking to you? Well, just commit one to three days. He said, set aside everything else. The Lord told him, he said, I'll take care of everything else. And if you can't go away, if you've got a job, whatever it is, take time. Take time, come home at night from work, you and your wife, whatever, get together and spend that time. Mom and I have done that each and every time we've had major things to deal with and each and every time we've gotten the wisdom of God. So commit one to three days to pray about nothing else except God's wisdom. Pray in tongues, number two, pray in tongues over your debt freedom plan. That's what he was dealing with us about, mm -hmm. but over whatever it is. <clears throat> what do you do? What, what helps the patience stand praying in the spirit? Praying in the Spirit. How many times, I remember, I remember the day that Papa asked you to preach in Anaheim. 
And I remember what you said. I had to fly back home to do church the next day, but I watched it. And you said you basically stayed in the room all day and prayed in tongues <laughs> and got the, got the interpretation of that in your message. Pray in tongues because praying in tongues dips the well down, dips the bucket down into the well. This is Paul Paul. Mm -hmm. Dips the bucket down into the well of the wisdom of God and then draws it back up again. And number three, pray until you know exactly what to do and make that determination. I'm not doing a thing until I know, mm -hmm. until I have that wisdom from God. And that's just a, that's just a demonstration of, of that patience that's in operation. And over my years that I've been here watching Kenneth and operating in that, there, there are things that used to throw me, Jeremy. There's stuff that people used to bring to me that people bring to me today. I mean, we have a staff of about 50 people or so and, and things that go on in a church here. And I'm telling you, Jeremy, it, I've developed, and that's what you do, you develop in these things. Keith Moore told me one time, I, I asked him some questions about his ministry and he said, you know, in the gifts of the Spirit, you just develop in those. You, you exercise those things. Well, I exercise patience mm -hmm. and steadfastness and endurance. And I've gotten to the place now where people bring things to me that, that 10 years ago, I mean, I, I'd go into a, a depression. Hmm. But now, I, there was one time not too long ago, they brought stuff to me. I started laughing. What was that? The joy. Mm -hmm. That joy counted all joy. Yeah. And it, it erupted on the inside of me because I know my Father loves me. I know that I have the wisdom of God. Yeah. And I know that I'm standing and enduring and going through this and everything is going to be all right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now listen, this, none of this is natural. No, <laughs> none, none of this comes easy to the flesh, but that's okay. Yeah. You and I are living by the Spirit of God that's in us, and it begins with casting the care, Absolutely. be it debt, that's be it, it pressure of any kind. You cast that onto the Lord, yeah. knowing that He cares for you. And I'm so thankful. Uh, Dad's talking about the, the life of, of my grandfather, Brother Copeland. Was so thankful for men and women all over the world. And Mom and I came out of debt. Praise the Need Lord. To let you know. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. We are God. debt free. And you're coming out. That's right. And we're all coming That's out. Right. God is bringing us out. Jesus said, yes. I am their good shepherd and I will lead Thank them God for that. out. He's leading you out. Yes. And we are out of time. <laughs> but we'll be back in just a moment. No one can stop my plan for you. It's a blessed plan. Stay on my word. Stay strong in faith. Insist on walking in my commandment of love. Grace just girded me up, man. It just in times where I was supposed to be sad, supposed to be down and out. My goodness, it just felt the strength of the Lord just anoint me to, to carry out the task that was at hand. And, you know, in, in the midst of that, just still being able to go and still being able to do and being ministered to by the Lord and by this grace and by this anointing in the process. It And, and for me, it wasn't just a, you know, a passive thing of, you know, I'm just going to ignore this and it not be that. No, grace took me through it. And here I stand on the other side said, I'm full of grace, great grace, amen. Faith is believing. Patience is continuing to believe. Faith in God's word is believing God's word. Patience is continuing to believe the word. This all begins with making Jesus the Lord of your life. And what happens to you in that moment of salvation, if you will continue to believe that Jesus is Lord, it will carry you through to victory every single time. But if you've never made him Lord, then do it, do it right now. Just pray this prayer with me today. It's the easiest thing you've ever done. Just say this. Say, oh God in heaven. Oh God in heaven. I come to you in Jesus' name. I come to you in Jesus' name. I receive my forgiveness. I receive my forgiveness. Thank you for washing me clean. Thank you for washing me clean. I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. And I confess with my mouth. And I confess with my mouth. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. He lived for me. 
He lived for me. He died for me. He died for me. He rose again for me. He rose again for me. And now I live for him. And now I live for him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy In Spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise now listen, God. if you prayed that prayer with me for the first time, all of heaven is rejoicing with you because you've come home to God. You've come home to your Father. And not only is all of heaven rejoicing with you, everybody at Kenneth Copeland Ministries is rejoicing with you. And my grandparents, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, have a gift that they'd like to send to you. We call this our salvation package. It's a, it's a small package. It's a book called He Did It All For You by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. Uh, welcome to the family. All these chapters are in here. God's will is the Holy Spirit. Just to give you, begin to give you a good understanding of uh, of this new life that's ahead of you now. And along with this book, we're gonna send you these two uh, easy to read brochures, just tell you how to begin to study your Bible, get you on a good Bible reading plan, just get the Word of God going down on the inside of you. And when you do that, you begin to understand God's got a plan for your life. Mm -hmm. And it begins today. It has nothing to do with the mistakes of the past. It has to do with you and who you are right now. And you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's who you are now, and that's who you will continue to be. Praise God. Just let us know you want this package. We'll get it to you. Call, write, contact us online, and we'll send this to you absolutely free. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all you're getting, get understanding. Proverbs 4, 7 through 9. If you really want to get the wisdom of God, you'll have to do more than casually read the scriptures a few minutes a day. You'll have to feed on them day and night. You'll have to get rid of the rubbish you've been feeding into your consciousness by reprogramming your mind with the Word of God. Do whatever it takes to saturate yourself with the Word of God. There is no sickness, no disease, no problem, no malady that the spirit, soul, body of any human being can encounter in the curse that's come on this earth through the sin of man that the Word of God won't fix it, praise God. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. The Great Lakes Victory Campaign, August 15th through 17th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the U.S. Cellular Arena in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The 2013 Venezuela Victory Campaign. Kenneth Copeland will be in Maracaibo, Venezuela, August 30th through 31st. Living Victory East Coast Faith Encounter, Atlanta, Georgia, September 13th through 14th with Kenneth Copeland and Dr. Stephen and Kelly Swisher. Word Explosion, October 10th through 12th with Kenneth Copeland, Bill Winston, and Chaplain A.L. Downing in Columbia, South Carolina. Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign, November 14th through 16th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Hilton Memorial Chapel in Woodbridge, Virginia. Now, every Friday on the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast is Offering Day, and I want to read something to you that I read last Friday, and we'll look at it again. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and verse 6, it says this, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one of you give as he purposes in his heart. You see, sparingly and bountifully, uh, that's descriptions of your heart. Yeah. How are you yeah. giving? Yeah. He says, let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. You know, you cannot give cheerfully if you're under pressure to give. That's why on this broadcast in, in uh, Eagle Mountain International Church and, and uh, churches of pastors who believe God and will stand on His Word, they don't put pressure on people to yeah. give. Why? Yeah. Because that's not between the pastor and that person. That's between that person yeah, and God. Exactly. And he goes on exactly. to say this, and God is able to make all grace Praise abound God. toward you, you that God. you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. You and I are living in the year of great Grace. Oh, thank That's you, what Jesus. the Spirit of God said about that early, cha God. early church, that great grace was on them all. That's a, that's a summary statement yeah. of everything that yeah. was going on. Let that summarize your life, my life, this ministry, this yeah. church. Great grace was on great them all. Grace How do you all. say everything that's going on? <laughs> you can't. You just have to say yeah. great grace yeah. is on them all. And partners, we believe that great grace is on you. Yes. As, you are, as you give, as the Lord leads you to give, not from pressure, not from necessity, yeah. just out of a, a thankful heart to be partnered with people who are advancing yeah. the kingdom in the world, 
Great grace is on you because yes. of that. Thank you so yes. much for getting involved with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland through your prayers, through your support. And we are standing in agreement with you that every need you have is met. Every bill you have is paid and grace is abounding towards you so that it may abound through you. Yes. Amen. If you want to be a part of this offering, all you have to do is let us know. You can call, you can write, you can give online and, and just let the Lord lead you in it. And if he's not leading you to give, that's because he's got an assignment for you somewhere else. So pay attention and do what he tells you to do. Can I say something? Go for it. I just want to say thank you for having me on with you. This that's is really a, a joy of my life. And Jeremy, I'm very proud of you and Sarah, your family. You guys are amazing. Praise the Lord. And to see my, my son grow up and do this, it's the fulfillment of a father's heart. Praise God. And Thank you. I just, I have so much appreciation, <laughs> admiration. And can you lend me a 10? <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Excuse us while we have a moment. <laughs> Listen, we love you so much. This is Jeremy and George Pearsons reminding you that Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Thank you for joining us today on The Believer's Voice of Victory. To purchase this week's broadcasts on DVD or MP3 on CD, go to our website or call us today. Remember this week's product offer. These ministry tools are designed to help you live a happy and successful life in Christ. Get the Word working in your life and experience all God has for you. If you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, be sure to request your free salvation package. This will help you understand who you are in Christ and how to start living in victory.